Yeah, I was never a mass guru like that. Have you heard about ITP? Well, I guess not. Today, are going to be, they are going to be talking about ITP because I'm going to be having an interview with a computer engineering student and an electrical electronic engineering student. So, they are going to be sharing with their experiences of how they got to this level, what they did, and the advice. They are going to give you more advice on it and the experience of how they got it and more about that ITP. So, stay tuned. Right here, I'm with. Really, I'm with Allah. A birdie, Justin. I'm Andrew Rosano. Okay, Andrew Rosano. What level are you? 300. 300 level. Okay. What level are you? I mean, 200 level. 200 level, nice. What level? 500 level. 500 level, okay. What course? Computer engineering. Computer engineering, wow. I'm studying electrical electronics engineering. Electrical electronics engineering, nice. What Same course? as is electrical electronics electrical engineering. Electronics. So, what inspired you to study electrical electronics engineering? In Elizabeth University. But what caught me, what actually uh, drew my attention to electrical engineering was because of the kind of engineering that it was. It's like the single engineering mm. course that you see that actually encapsulates almost every branch of engineering into it. Okay. It's like it's versatile, so okay. you can easily diversify into any aspects you want later on. Okay. In life. As regarding studying at Elizabeth University, it's well. I came here for a visit once and okay. the serene environment and mm. peaceful study okay. of how it was for students to interact with each other and yes. just talk. Okay. It really caught my attention and mm. I think nice. that was one of the factors as to which I actually chose a desired university. Okay. So what inspired you to study this course? Okay, studying electrical electronics and drawing in Lizard University. Firstly, I wanted to study in a private university because of strikes and all. Okay. I wanted to avoid spending time in university. Then, secondly, for electrical electronics, I wanted to study robotics and AI, but okay. there's no, like, there are no private universities in Nigeria doing robotics and AI, but electrical electronics is versatile. I can later diverse in my master's or okay. PhD. So, mm -hmm. it made me to study electrical electronics engineering. Mr. Justin, what inspired you? Well, when it comes to my choice of studying computer engineering, I looked at the world around me because I was really thinking about it. It was a heavy decision. So I looked at the way the world is going and you would observe that the world is really moving towards AI and computer, IT, data, all that stuff. Technology is really moving in that direction. So it gets to the point where you cannot talk of technology without talking about computer engineering. Mm, nice. So due to that reason, I felt it was best to mm. put myself in that field. Okay. And as for coming to Elizabeth University, well, my elder brother finished from here. So okay. my father felt like like he really liked the school. So he okay. just pushed me in. So in your in this in your course of study, what experience do you have as a trendy level electrical electronics engineer? Mm -hmm. So far, so good. It's been nice. Okay. Isn't it? It hasn't been without ups and downs, but it's been nice to try the way. Mm. The lectures or the courses might seem tasking, but I think one thing that helps is getting to know the kind of lecturer that you're actually interacting with, yeah. who's taking your course. So yeah. if you try and understand the kind of lecturer you have, I think it helps or goes along with helping okay. how far you accept the course. And okay. It's been tasking. Okay. Interesting along. Interesting so along. Okay. It's been good. As a Tony level electrical engineering student, I found it like easier studying okay. this course because it's more of mathematics, physics, mostly that part of science. And I've been someone that I've loved it from mm. secondary school. Nice. And I've even primary school, I've, li I've liked mathematics and all. So okay. most of my courses, I've not really found it it's difficult, especially mm. my departmental courses or engineering faculty courses so I've not really found it difficult to share. Yeah. It has been okay, it has been it has been taxing, it has been because wow. you have to read overnight and all. Okay. But it has it has been going smooth. Well I would say the experience has been enlightening because okay. you know when I first came here hundred level there was a lot I did not know okay. that I know now. Mm. And one thing that I'm very confident of as a 500 level student is there's nothing I cannot learn at this point. Because okay. not like this, my brother here, I was never a mass guru like that. Okay. It was at a point in my life I sat down and said, okay, let's do this. Okay. So like, I have learned that because all the tasking exercises, all the projects, all that stuff that you go through, it builds you up mm. to a point, it builds your confidence. So you know that, okay, I can do this to this level mm. and then with that knowledge you're like okay i can try and scale up to this with okay. that you keep building mm. so that base foundation is there what really usually bother you guys when you start studying those course what are your greatest fears something uh, that you are you bothered of see um i won't call them greatest fears 
or maybe something that's a little bit like the topic to bother about is the issue of job availability mm. or you know that there are no jobs to be honest we all know that the technology industry or the technological industries hasn't exactly grown in a country like nigeria okay so that's where you see most of us flying out of the country to go for that education and then end okay. up staying there and relocating mm. so i think what i'll call my fear is that not being able to sit back like having to go out and have to get more experience is okay, nice but yeah. i would actually like to come back home and actually you know establish something actually work on something and do what i enjoy okay. doing here in this country rather okay. than having to migrate totally outside and mm, nice. then picking up a new environment and okay. starting to adjust all over again okay i want to like develop your own country not develop my country i would say develop my own company okay and or let's say it startup Okay. Yeah, right here in this country. Okay. I don't want to have to do it outside. At okay. least you should be able to give back. Okay, to um, your country from where exactly. you learn from. Okay. My greatest fear studying this course, electrical electronics engineering. A lot of things here, but my main fear is coming out like feeling. I know I don't like that. It's not something that has, hmm. that I don't like like a lot. So my greatest fear like that makes me be on my knees all this. That I know I want to I want to pass. I want to come out like. I want to come out with a very good grade. Okay. Because over over time, I've not been that student that has bad grades as well. Okay. So that has been my greatest fear in this course. Hmm. And in this type of country, most times you don't you don't come out and you see job Immediately. except you have like very 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 good results, especially okay. now. So as I am about to finish and enter into, I often say that like when people finish from school, because I know, I know a lot of people that finished. Yeah. Sometimes that's should I say first year or the first few months after school, yeah. you really feel lost. You're like, ah, now I finished from school. What's next? Mm. And you start to think. Should I do this? Should I do that? I'm looking for jobs. Like they have said, jobs are not really here in our country and yeah. you start to... But I would say that, you know, in the face of all those fears, you still you still have, should I say, a plan in mind. Yeah. Because if you have something in mind now, you're like, okay, even if I'm not entirely sure of what's going on, I can just stick to the plan. Okay. Whatever happens, yeah. I can adapt. So yeah. I would say my process. greatest my greatest fear now is the unknown. But then... We are still going to go into the unknown whether we like it or not. Okay, so what is IEEE? I've been hearing about it and I really want to know. Okay, IEEE name first is the film in the Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineering. Okay. Okay, IEEE is the largest tanker organization we have in the world. Okay. It deals with like, adva- its motto is advancing technology for humanity. Okay. So, all these things I've been saying since that, techno- that the world is changing and yeah. if you are not into technology, you are not going to be moving with the world yeah so to advance to like make yourself in that field yeah that's one of the reasons why you should join IEEE okay IEEE has various branches in different mm. schools in Nigeria okay even abroad because okay. it's, a, it's a multinational um, organization okay and with IEEE there are a lot of things there are a lot of benefits that you can get I would define IEEE as a body of professionals okay who work together in the same field yeah relatively the same field to accomplish okay. advancements in technology. Mm-hmm. You know how they say no man is an island? Yeah. So what this does is basically gives professionals in electrical and electronics engineering, computer engineering, IST okay. engineering, gives that entire field, mm. the whole body of knowledge encompassing that field, okay. gives them a community of people. Mm. So in case, for instance, you are doing maybe a project yeah. and you feel lost yeah. in any sense, mm. You can go to this community of people because they will assist you. Okay. Because they have they are in that field with yeah. you. Electropy is basically an organization like an association or organization of mm. electrical and electronics engineers. Even okay. though that is not the leaf body that is that it encompasses. We have yeah. computer engineers under us, we okay. have electrical engineers. Okay. I think now we are incorporating automotive engineers, okay. we have computer scientists, different okay. fields that have to do with IT. Okay. And basically what they stand for is just to develop technology or advancing technology for the betterment of humanity, right? Okay. So from what my colleague said is just they've created a kind of hub okay. that um what they do is different papers or knowledge that senior professionals okay. in like click field as well have gathered over the years okay. papers projects hmm. things they worked on information so exactly so okay. when you uh, you're just developing in the field hmm. you need an assistant yeah. things are looking to test or just need to be a member yes 
of that body just gives you direct access to the work they've done over their lifetimes. Okay. So all you just need is you just pull from that source of knowledge yeah, and just tap a little from that knowledge. Exactly, and, and then okay. to mm. add you, and then you move on, you grow also, yeah. you work on your own things, and yeah. then you give back, and then young people, young professionals are coming up yeah. after you also do the same thing and tap okay. from your own knowledge and just yeah. keep furthering and furthering. Mm. A lot of benefits attached to HPE. HP is okay, an organization that helps in advanced technology. For benefit of HP, if you mm. join HP, you have an access to a monthly bulletin. That bulletin okay. it entails projects that that are undone in the world that you okay. can do. Okay. And they are going to show you how to do it. Okay. And IGP again, it has a website. That website, if you have any, like if you're going to work on your project now, your yeah. final project, okay. you can go into onto the website and get materials. Okay. For yourself to you be source to, information yeah you source information to be able to work on it okay and do something very good then mm, okay nice. again on that type of project you can do is if let's say your, your community now you want to create something okay. that is that's due technology and mm. you are not able to fund it yeah. if you're a body or you know your body then you can talk to that body then you write okay. to IEEE okay. for them to give you funding Okay. For you to be able to fund that project, okay. but it will supervise you the project. Fund it and supervise it. Wow. Yes, that's how right. that's what IEEE does. I would mention the first benefit as reputation. Wow. You know how when you see some certain certifications on someone's CV, yeah, it increases the level of respect you yeah. have for that. For instance, if someone goes to Harvard, yeah, and the person graduates with a first class from Harvard, they're like, mm. okay, this person graduated with a first class from Harvard. Yeah. IEEE does the same thing for engineers. Mm. When they see that you are IEEE certified, they're like, okay, this person is a member of this well-respected body. Wow. So the person is should be capable okay. as one. Two, like I said before, maybe you are working on a project. Have you ever heard of the term, don't reinvent the wheel? That's okay. basically, if somebody has done it before, yeah. you don't have to do it again. Okay. Exactly. You are working on a project and you are you need to do something that somebody has done. There's no mm. point in doing that. So you can just pick from that knowledge and then improve upon it. Improve it so that's yeah. that, that's like two advantages. One mm. to the individual, one to the society. Wow. Because there will always be advancements in technology. Yes, yes. And then you, you don't have to stress on what has already been done. Yeah, you have to improve on them. Exactly. Okay. You go on excursions mm. a lot of times for... I think almost all the excursions I've gone on in this school are IEEE excursions. Wow. So it gives students the opportunity to really explore and see a lot of things, see wow. how things are done in the field okay. and gather more knowledge. So that is the advantage of IEEE and I hope they are going to be very benefit. They are going to be very beneficial to everyone. So IEEE is a very good organization. You can see if you are a certificate, you are going to be satisfied and increase your level of respect. So what advice do you have for your students who are coming to study? And this name, electrical electronic engineering in Elizabeth University. Be focused because okay. Elizabeth is in the university that you see a lot of distractions. Wow. It's not it's not just one easy place that you go to. You just have to be focused and yeah. you have to be able to read. Hmm. It, electrical electronics is not just one small course. Wow. It's not one easy course. Hmm. Even your lecturers will make will make it tiring for you. Hmm. But you have to just push because if you are pushing you get better. Yeah. And you you will see the results. Okay. The first thing I would say is your conviction must be strong. And wow. what do I mean by that? You have to be 100% sure okay. that this is what you want to do. Because okay. if you if there is doubt in your mind, if you're like, eh, maybe I should try. And okay. There's a high probability you fall out before hmm. long. That's, right. That's one. The second one is you should be willing to apply yourself. Hmm. What do I mean by that? That's when you are coming to school, you should expect the stress okay. because it's going to be stressful. Yeah. When you are coming to school, you should expect that they are going to task you, they are going to bend you, mm. they are going to see a lot of things. So you have to come with an open mind that, okay, mm. I'm coming to develop myself. It's not okay. going to be easy, yeah. but I'm going to do it that way. Okay. And then when you come with that mindset, you will be able to grasp the most of the program mm. and everything. It's very, it's very easy to grasp the fundamentals when you're like that. And then if you grasp the fundamentals as you get higher, mm. you would realize that, okay, this knowledge is actually connecting. Wow. And you would take more meaning from what you have come to study. Mm, okay. Electrical engineering is at the university. Okay. <laughs> well, 
first advice is um be committed let's start okay, from there committed. and wow. just be committed be like be ready to give it your 100 percent 110 percent actually give, like, it your best. Give, give it everything you've got okay. engineering as you will not just even electrical engineering wow. but melissa the university is a private university yeah. now most people have this conviction that it's private university is supposed to be they feel it's easy okay. compared to public university yeah. well, i'm going to tell you that <laughs> it's not uh, <laughs> i'm going to debunk that by saying yes public university Investing might be very stressful. very stressful because now they're dealing with a large number, number of, of students. students so yeah. they are attending students to teacher ratio or to lecturer yeah, ratio is business. too high yeah. compared to that of private, private where it is close. You can have a close interaction with your, your lecturer. lecturers. That's okay. the edge that private university have. But that doesn't remove the stress of the course. Okay. You have to give it your best, hmm. be able to work over time hours okay. people that are in 500 level will tell you the times that they have projects and then they call them out other hours mm. so you have to give your lecturer you have to give reports you have to do this even though it was 300 there are projects that we have to do for a particular course and you don't have anything to do in the faculty on a sunday but you just have to be there and just give it because mm. by monday you give the report and everything you must present yeah. so that doesn't remove the stress of the course it just wow. makes it easier for you to interact with the lecturers and help you to bond yeah, yes. you can easily go and complain and just talk to them and okay, they will understand. Yeah. In public universities, you don't have that. Who has nobody has that time? Wow. Few lecturers, very few lecturers have that time to have to talk to students like that. Okay. So give it your best, give it your all. Don't be yes, I'm not saying you should not your university party or whatever yeah, it is yeah, you want yeah, to yeah, do. Sure. Have your distractions, but at the same time, don't forget the major goal yeah, or the major reason why you actually goal. came okay. to school. So just give it your best, give it hundred percent and then they go do the rest okay so what are the course or what are the subjects that you recommend for students who are studying who want to come and study electrical electronics engineering in Elizabeth the university oh physics mathematics the main two courses for them and okay being your under level you had a little bit of chemistry okay yeah yeah but these are your main courses that are, they are going to deal with to 500 they're okay. going to be breaking those courses to 500 okay. yeah, i would recommend physics math further math wow and chemistry because okay. you would think oh i'm not i mean nothing concerned me concerned chemistry. chemistry that's what you think but the truth is that at some point you would have to apply a little bit of chemistry because okay. when you start dealing with things like transistors hmm. you would want they'll start explaining the chemical composition the yes. elemental composition of okay. so you need to be grounded in chemistry to understand what's going on okay. when you just be lost hmm. and many things like that one thing i would because i would recommend that everybody is vast because yeah. Knowledge is not divided. Yeah. It's just too broad for any one man to grasp everything. Okay. So everybody specializes in a specific field. Yeah. So as much as possible, take in as much knowledge as you can. Yeah. Because when you come here, you would find that everything is useful. Yes. Yeah, okay. Electrical engineering, as they said, the basics of math, physics, chemistry, okay. English. And then I'll ask, I'll add one more thing. Apart from aside to computer science, I will advise if knowledge like internet has grown these days, okay. like I would advise anybody to actually that is really interested in taking an engineering course. Okay. Or yeah, an engineering course or electrical mm. engineering. Nice. All you need to do is look into your course. Like okay. look at the applications that you can actually develop okay. yourself in. Take yeah. trades. Okay. All these online courses that are free. Okay. Take trades in them. They say programming to be specific, especially okay, electrical engineering, and computer yeah. engineering. Okay. You need to be vast in programming. At least okay. start with the basics of Python and okay. then develop yourself onwards. Okay. Hmm. Then you have Java, whatever it is. But okay. just pick up a trade in those things. Okay. It shows that you're actually so developing. Those things. Okay. It shows that you're developing an interest okay. in what you actually plan on okay. doing throughout your life. So mm, nice. gain that experience. It's actually a really long way in helping you. Mm. You need to go over it and start struggling when they start teaching, introducing okay. them to university. Okay. Just blend on and then you keep getting knowledge and move mm, nice i've gone for it before i've done any it program before yeah i did my hundred level i did that a, a wiring company it's called denkisha okay. that's the name of the country thank you wiring okay thank you cables and wires okay that's i did it so there we did I was, I was working as an engineer as a maintenance engineer okay so all, all we do as a maintenance engineer is we check machines. Okay. So if there are faults in connections, or okay. we correct them. Okay. That's what I did. My mm. underlay white. Okay, they taught you all those stuff. Yeah, they taught okay. me most of the electrical components and how okay. to use them. How to use them. Wow. And how to troubleshoot for faults okay. in electrical wiring. Mm, that's nice. that's the things I learned. Okay. For many machines. Okay. 
So yes. I've done the 3 ITs, 100, 300, 400, and I would say the major thing I've learned from them. During my IT time, I mostly worked as an IT support. Okay. That means anytime users have issues, yeah. they'll call us to solve the issues. Okay. Anytime there are network issues, okay. any, any type of issue at all with their okay. systems. So one thing I've learned is, one, you need to be adaptable. You need to be very versatile okay. and creative because a problem will not arise based on just what you know. Yes, it yes. may be just a little of what you know and span a whole what other... You know. Exactly. So you have to be able to react when you're in the field wow. because, you know, things can happen and, you know, the the customer will be on your neck or the user will be on your neck. Ah, my system, my system, aren't you? Mm. So you have to work mm. on that pressure. It sounds like people, that's why employers usually ask. It sounds like a joke, but you really have to be able to work on that pressure. Mm. And then there's human interaction. You need to wow. be able to communicate with yeah, people and listen to them as well. Because yeah. a lot of times when people are telling you their issues, you realize they can't really communicate the issues. So yes. you that has knowledge in that okay, field, yes. you have to make sense of what they are saying, yes, yes. even though they cannot effectively yes, communicate yes. it. So they don't know the exactly. And so then you have to be able to calm them down too. Yes, yes. So, okay, it's not, it's, not, it's not really a big problem. Calm oh, okay, down, all those yes. things. All those things are important. Mm, very nice. So what skill do you acquire before you came to Elizabeth the University? Or what skill do you have before you came to study this particular course? Um, I don't I was not someone that had time to acquire skills sharp. Okay. But like getting to university, I I started to learn Python sharp. Okay. Python programming. Mm, very nice. So like now I'm developing my programming skills. I've only done two courses on it. So I've been developing my programming skills sharp. Mm, nice. But before coming to Israel, I did not acquire any skill. Because okay. when I was in Israel, I knew that yes, I really really needed this. Okay, very nice. So I started to develop it. Mm, nice. mm. Before I came to Eliza, I was already interested in programming, mm. and I started looking into HTML and CSS, just okay, a little stuff. A little but I was not really deep inside it. Wow. It was after I got here, I went very deep inside it, and. Oh, any other skill. I would call logical thinking a skill. Very wow. important logical skill. Thinking. really appreciate you for coming. Yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You're very welcome. Dana. I really appreciate you for your attention you give to us. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you guys learned something for this video. See, the experiences are very good. You guys need to know a little bit more about programming a little bit because it's very, very important for people who are studying computer engineering, electrical and electronics engineering. And I hope you guys know a little bit about the IEEE. It's a very good body. It helps you. It's a very good body. And it also helps you to give you more information about your course and even to carry any projects on it. It helps you to make more friends and socialize with other engineers in that your field and they'll give you more information. So IEEE is a very good body. Mm -hmm.